Hi! Do you ever get stuck choosing colors for your applique and paper piecing projects? Today I'll take you through my favorite tips on choosing color and we'll use my elephant and eye pattern. The other thing we'll go over is some techniques for foundation paper piecing that will save you time and will give you great results. I'm Jennifer Sampu and I am the creator of the Elephant and Eye Quilt, which we'll be talking about today. And the main points that I want to give to you is color selection. To make a good quilt great, it's important to know your value change, your color groupings, and especially when you're making the person, you don't want to cut their head off or cut their arms off or their feet off. And in choosing the proper color and value to the background, will be things that we're going over today. The other things that we're going to cover is some foundation paper piecing tricks that will give you accurate results and aren't too fussy. So I've pieced my background and the colors that I've chosen are fairly light and fairly soft. I've got my blues, my teals, my beiges, a little bit of gray, and then a nice sky blue. And I love the variety of texture, of color, and of nuance. Love this. So the girl or the woman is going to be located on this bottom right because I'm making a pillow. And like the, the man here or the boy, it's going to be to the far right. And it's important to choose colors and values that pop off the background. That's really crucial. I can't stress that enough because if I chose colors that were too much like the background, they might have a head cut off or they might have arms cut off or feet cut off. We don't, we don't want that. So this is where I'm showing you with the woman and this light ground. And again, paper piecing is kind of funny. It's the reverse. I'm going to be showing as if the girl's walking to the left, but she's really going to be walking to the right when it's finished. We'll tackle that later. However, I've got colors that I've chosen. There's some blues and greens. Here's some uh, cranberries and pinks and beautiful violets. I've chosen some lights and neutrals. And then I've chosen some warm yellows. These colors were inspired by an old fabric of mine that I love. And I love how this pink and these greens bounce off this background color. So I can use this color in, or this fabric, in the woman, but I don't have to. Just so you know where, where the colors can come from. And you can always choose a main print with lots of colors if you're having a hard time. Just make sure you've got lights, mediums, and darks in every color. Common mistakes that people might make if they don't think this through is to choose a color that's too much like the background to go on the head. If I chose this color to go for her head, it's too soft and it won't read properly because if I choose something like the green next, the green's much stronger it's got more hue in it, and it's just a more powerful color. Why don't we start with a violet colored hair? When you're doing the paper piecing, one of the things I like to do is have a piece that's definitely bigger than you need, a lot bigger than you need. So let's talk about the colors in the woman. I've got the warm colors, and I've got the cool colors, and I have this nice little pop of dark blue, and then I've got the light yellow. They're all solids, the Kona solids. And one thing that I would like to stress is that I would never take this yellow and put it at one of the extremities. Because I cut out a little piece of yellow. If this was put on her head, she wouldn't really have a head anymore because it would blend into the background white. So it's fine to use the lighter values with a light background, but keep them contained within the body versus on the extremities. The other thing I'd like to point out is, see how the elephant trunk ends in one teal? 
and her hand begins with a deeper teal. That forms a really nice visual connection between the animal and the human. So let's talk about materials. My favorite materials for paper piecing are um, a roller, unless you want to use an iron, but I like using a roller because you can sit right at your sewing machine. A little bit of glue stick. You could use a special sewing glue stick or the Elmer's that is for the first part of your paper piecing. A little rotary cutter, which I use with my quarter inch ruler. I've got paper scissors, little snipping scissors. I have the small snips at my sewing machine all the time. And you can use any kind of foundation paper piece. I like the Carol Dokes because it's so lightweight and it really tears off easy because it's basically newsprint that doesn't have um, writing on it. And there's also the Simple Foundations, which is a vellum, so it's transparent. You can see both sides. That is something that I've not used, but if you like that product, go for it. Here's your elephant and eye pattern, and it's got this wonderful opening. And it's got a booklet with all the instructions, and it has your paper piecing. So you find the woman, and this is one big sheet. So you'll fold it and put it on your copier face down, and you'll load your Carol Dokes so that you get each piece. Like, don't cut this up. Make a copy and cut this up. This is what you're using for your foundation piecing. And then you'll go through the booklet with all the instructions of what you need to do and how you need to do it. But I'm gonna be showing you just this for today. Here's the eight and a half by 11 piece of paper with the photocopy of the lady. So I cut it out roughly. You don't have to be exact. You're just getting rid of the excess paper. And that's what you can work with. I don't like cutting it close because it becomes too flimsy. The paper gives you some stability. The next thing that I do is I crease the paper along the lines. One, two, and this gives you markings and crease lines of where to put your fabrics and where you seam it. It's really helpful, and you'll see why when I start to piece it all together. So now here in the legs, you only want to crease there. Number seven. There's number six. Ten. So what this does on the back side is it shows you, I don't know if you, can, if, if you can see it, but there are lines along here that give you guidelines. So one of the things with paper piecing is that you've got to remember this is the back side and we're constructing it from the back side. So in the end, we'll be cutting out the silhouette and this will be the right side, so she's walking that way. I specifically didn't use solids because I want you to see that very clearly, what we're gonna do is flip this over. You see my fold lines here. This is the color of her head. So I am gonna take my glue stick, put a little piece of glue, a little bit of glue right there, And I'm going to stick this color with about a quarter of an inch overhang right there. And you see it's covering her whole, her whole head and with a quarter inch about um, hanging over that line on between number one and number two. 
Switching it back. One of the secrets that I use is I make very generous cuts so that I don't have a problem with having to rip things out and make bigger pieces. So I take this, I flip it over, and now I'm going to stitch right across through that line. And I start about a quarter of an inch before the silhouette. And my stitch length is a 1.6. The nice thing about doing a very narrow stitch length is that the Carol Dokes foundation paper pops right off. You stitch right along the line and I go about a quarter of an inch over. So I finger flip this over and I use my roller and get a nice flat seam. Then I flip it back over and this crease is already here between two and three. I fold the paper back. I get my quarter inch ruler and where the catch is on the quarter inch ruler, you snug that up right to the paper piece and where that seam was. Take your rotary cutter and there you go. And that's kind of the magic that happens. So when you flip this back over, you have this fabric a quarter inch over the number two line. So now we're coming to the third color, which is this beautiful little print. And again, it's right sides together. And you just match up, and I've got plenty of fabric, and I don't even need to cut it now, but you match it right sides together. See how they're right sides together? And you match up your edges. And then you sew right through the second seam between two and three. One of the nice things about this pattern is because you're not blending it or adhering it or sewing it to another piece that's pretty forgiving with where your lines are. And you fold it back. Then you flip it over. And between three and four, you fold it back. You get your quarter inch ruler. Cut that off. If you want to cut some of this excess off, that's fine. I usually do it as I go. That blade is dull. Okay, there, and then you proceed to go through the next colors. Now here comes a little bit of the tricky part because you have, this is number six, this is seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 
So we're going to get the number six down. We're going to cut it here. for the back leg and it's not happening at number seven. So we're gonna cut it up here at number seven. And then I just do a little cut right there in between her legs. I estimate that. Okay, so we're gonna be adding seven and then eight. We've got this little piece of red going in for seven. So when I fold it back with right sides, I'm just having a little piece that goes right sides together right there. Let me flip it around. And now we're on number eight, which is this black and white color. And again, I don't want to put it in the middle. I want to put it back on along the, this side of her leg. So I'm actually going to cut this a little smaller. I'm going to put it right there. You have your right sides together, put it under, and you go right across just that one back leg. And you stop. And we're almost done. We have eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So here's we'll finish off with nine. We'll roll this over. Roll it, flip it back. Here's nine, we cut that off. I love how these quarter of an inch ruler grabs. It's so helpful. And then the dark foot. Remember what I told you about picking a nice strong color? Okay, this is a big piece, but her foot is, is fairly big. I can do it this way and I don't need all of that. So I'm gonna cut some of this off. That's extra right there. Still being plenty big. Okay. Right sides together. New machine for me. This is fancy the way it cuts. My old Bernina doesn't doesn't cut automatically. I have to use scissors every time. Okay, and I'm going to trim, a, see how right here we're coming into the top of her front foot? I'm just going to trim this off just a little bit. We're not cutting it all out yet, trimming it off. And then we have 10 and 11 left. And I, did I get, yep, I got 10. And I'm going to trim a little bit more. You see right here, just to get rid of the bulk. I never want to over trim at this point because if you cut her toe off, you're just bumming and you have to redo it. Okay, so number, number 10. A little snip in here, it's catching. It gets kind of fussy in this area of her legs because she's got the two legs. But just take your time, manipulate it, it'll come out. <laughs> Here's the green piece. Right sides together. I'm holding it right there. And now you're Sewing right along at number between seven and ten. I'll 
trim this off a little bit. Clean that up just a little. And then the last piece, yay! And this is her foot, so it's going to come down like this. So I'm just going to put right here. This is much too big, but that's okay. We're just going to leave it because we're going to cut it all off. Did I say I like having pieces that are big enough that I never have an issue of not having space that needs to be covered, not covered? Okay, so, <laughs> looks like a mess, right? This looks like a mess. Wait till you see the magic that happens. I've rolled them all flat. I will usually give this a good press. So let's give it a good press. Okay, so here's the fun part. This seriously, it looks like a blob. But I'm going to take my little Elmer's glue and just touch upon her toe. And her other toe, her foot, and her hand. And that's it. And so now when I cut it out, I cut right along the line. There she is. A little cleanup right there. There's some extra fabric that overlapped. Just a little bit. A little loose end. And there you have it. She is ready to go onto the quilt. At this point, you can um, reserve her and finish the elephant up and then when it's ready you do the elephant and the woman and I'll teach you later how to applique them to the quilt. Thanks for stopping by today. I hope you learned something. The pattern can be found in the subscription box below and the link and give me a thumbs up and we'll see you next time.